Okay, so looking at 12.3, um, in 12.3, uh, we move on to um, away from just having acute angles uh, to what happens when the angles are uh, uh, larger than 90 degrees, or even what do we do when we get into negative angles and whatnot. So uh, we learned uh, this week about um, the fact that we're going to measure angles starting at the positive and go um, this direction clockwise, right? And so, for example, if we have an angle that's like this, what we're measuring is the angle from here to here. And um, uh, when we do that, what we realize is that angle is going to pass through points. Um, and those points are going to be um, in our quadrants. Um, if you remember, we know that this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Okay, and then the way that we um, define the um, uh, points is by um, x, y, and then we said that the length of uh, from the point uh, to the origin is going to be r or the radius. So if we take a look at this, what we find out is that we can find the values of these um, uh, by um, using the fact that x and y are going to be positive or negative in these different quadrants. So let's just kind of review really quick, and we're going to make a nice big chart here. And this chart's going to be um, important for you. And so I would copy it down and have it as a reference. And so on this chart, it's going to have um, five things. The first, th or really six things. It's the first thing it's going to have is the, the functions. And we're going to pair them together as reciprocals. And so if you remember, we've got um, six functions. And so we've got, um, and it'd be helpful for you to kind of do this on your own, but sine of theta is going to be the same as um, the reciprocal of that, which is cosecant of theta. And so those two are going to have things in common that we're going to talk about in a second. Um, the uh, And then we have the cosine of theta, which is reciprocal, that is secant of theta, and then the tangent of theta, and um, that's going to be with the cotangent of theta. Okay, and then each of those um, are going to have a value based on the coordinates. And this is the really important thing, and you really got to buy into this definition of those, which might actually be a little bit harder for those of you that did uh, this in geometry last year. Um, and the value of sine is just going to always be y over r. Because the, if this is our angle right here, um, we're going to let the, um, the y value is always going to be our opposite side. And so that means that the cosecant is just going to be r over y. And then cosine is going to be x over r. So that means secant is going to be r over x. And then tangent is always going to be the opposite, which is y over adjacent, which is x, so y over x, which means cotangent is going to be x over y. So um, one important thing to notice, x and y are the coordinates, so x and y can be positive and negative, whereas r um, is uh, a value, it's a length, and so it will always be positive. And that's an important thing for you to remember for the rest of this. So for the rest of this, we're going to talk about the value of these in each of the four quadrants. So we got quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. And so in quadrant one, well, in quadrant one, X and Y are positive and positive. R is always positive. That means in quadrant one, all of the um, functions have a positive value. But in quadrant two, our y value is positive, but our x value is negative. So if our x value is negative, the ones with x are going to become negative. And so for sine and cosecant, well, that's y over r and r over y. Well, y and r are both positive in quadrant two, so it remains positive. But for cosine, x is negative, r is positive, And so that means this one's going to be negative. And so in quadrant two, now the value of cosine and um, secant is going to be negative. For tangent and cotangent, well, it's y over x, so y is positive, x is negative, and so it's going to be negative as well. Take a second, it might be a good idea even to pause to see if you could fill the rest of this in, because this is something that's going to be really useful to you, and so being able to do it yourself would be um, helpful. 
So if you take a look at these, in quadrant three, both x and y are negative. That means this one would be negative. This is negative as well because x is negative. So negative over r or r over negative is going to be negative. But the tangent and cotangent, interestingly, in quadrant three, uh, tangent and cotangent are going to be positive. And then in quadrant four, our y is negative, right? You end up with a positive x value and a negative y value. So sine and cosine, or cosecant, are negative. Cosine and secant are positive. Tangent and cotangent are going to be negative because y is negative, but x is positive. So negative divided by a positive or positive divided by a negative is always going to be negative. So this is an important thing to remember. It's going to be something you're going to have to be pretty fluent with um, when doing these. OK, um, and so using our... Um, uh, this chart, we can start do a problem like this, and that would be find the value of the six functions if an angle passes through negative three, four in standard position. So we've got our six functions, and so sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, and then cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And remember, the you've got all these nice things, um, such that sine and cosecant are reciprocals, cosine and secant are reciprocals, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So. If I do negative 3, 4, well, where, where does that point go? Well, negative 3, 4 just goes about right here. And then we have to find out, well, what is the distance of R? Well, this is a really nice 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Note that the I put a positive 3 there, even though it really is negative, because in a right triangle, it would be the distance, and so it would be a positive 3. Um, so that's why I did that. But if, it's, if you do 3 squared plus 4 squared, you get 25, which is... Um, uh, the square root of, uh, which is 5 squared. And so that's why we got a 3, 4, 5. So looking at these, y is 4, r is 5, and so sine is 4 fifths. And then that means that cosecant is 5 fourths. Now cosine, again, we're in quadrant 2. So remember in quadrant 2, this one, the cosine and cosine and secant are negative, and so are tangent and cotangent. So cosine is x over r, which would give you negative 3 fifths, which means that secant is just negative 5 thirds. And then for tangent, it's going to be 4 over um, 3, but it's going to be negative 4 thirds, right? Because it's y over x, and y is 4, um, x is negative 3, 4 over negative 3 is just negative 4 thirds. And then the reciprocal of that is negative 3 fourths. So if you know that point that it's going through, then it's really easy to produce the value of the six trig functions um, for that angle, if you know what that point is. Um, there is a couple of special cases that we need to consider, and that is, um, what are the values of the six trig functions at, um, let's do, we'll just for this time do 90 degrees and 180 degrees, okay? And so um, if we look at these, so let's just go ahead and do this as a chart to help us out. And so if our theta is 90 degrees and if our theta is 180 degrees, so we got sine, cosine, tangent, and then cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And at 90 degrees, if you think about 90 degrees, right, if our angle's here, then we've got an it goes through this point. Now, we don't know um, what the um, uh, y value would be, but we do know the x. And so if we let this be O or 0, we also then need to think about what R is. Well, R is the distance from the origin to that point. Well, it's just going to be r and this is just going to be r the length and the y coordinate in this case at 90 degrees are going to be the same so when you look at sine sine is um 
the y value over r, and so it just turns out to be r over r, which is 1. So the sine of 90 degrees is 1. But the cosine of 90 degrees is um, 0 over r, which just equals 0. So the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0. Sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. Cosine is equal to 0. Well, tangent, tangent is going to be the y over x, and so it's going to be r over 0. Well, r can't divide by 0, and so it's actually undefined. And so the um, tangent function is actually not defined when the angle is 90 degrees. We'll get back to that later. Cosecant is the reciprocal of secant, and so or sine, and so that's just going to be r over r, which is 1. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which means that we're going to have r over 0, which means we end up with, just like tangent, it's also undefined. Now here's something that's a little bit um, confusing because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, right? Well, the reciprocal of r over 0 is 0 over r, and so it just turns out to be 0. And so that defines everything for 90 degrees. If we do 180, it's the exact same idea, except now we have negative r and 0, right? The length from the origin to the point we're going to call r, and so that means the coordinate is negative r and 0. So y over r is just going to be 0 over r, which is 0. So the sine of 180 degrees is 0. The cosine of 180 degrees is just going to be um, negative r over r, which equals negative 1. And so cosine is equal to negative 1 at 180 degrees. Tangent is going to be um, y over x. And so it's going to be 0 over negative r, which is just 0. So the tangent of 180 is 0. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Well, remember it was sine was 0 over r, so it's r over 0. So we get undefined for cosecant. Secant is the, t the reciprocal of cosine, and so it's just going to be negative 1. Reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1. And cotangent is the reciprocal of 0 over r, which is r over 0, which is also undefined. Okay, we'll um, do another video where we start talking about reference angles, um, and so more into 12.2.